from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! We have clearly stated motives, uh, but they are not anti-war motives. Um, uh, we are not pacifists. We are transparency activists who understand that transparent government tends to produce just government. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The group plans to release up to 400,000 classified documents on the Iraq war on Saturday, the biggest leak in U.S. history. We'll speak with Pentagon Papers whistleblower Dan Ellsberg. He's flying to London to meet with Julian Assange. Then don't ask, don't tell is still military policy. But Defense Secretary Robert Gates issues a new directive that will limit to five the number of senior military officials authorized to discharge service members for violating the policy. We'll talk to Iraq War vet Dan Choi, who was discharged for admitting he's gay. He tried to sign up again this week. Well, it's very difficult for us to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell if President Obama continues to do nothing but say some words. Some people make their statements based on words. I make my statement based on service and action. And I hope that President Obama can do the same thing. And lawless courts. A new report in The Nation magazine suggests immigration judges who are supposed to give immigrants and deportation proceedings a fair hearing have been violating the law and even deporting U.S. citizens. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Haiti's confronting what's being called its biggest medical emergency since the January earthquake, with a suspected outbreak of cholera. Nearly 140 people have died, and over 1,500 have fallen ill in the central region of Lower Artibonite. Haitian presidential candidate Charles Henry Baker appealed for aid after visiting the area. The situation is terrible. Inside the hospital, they're overcrowded. They're not overcrowded. It's, it's beyond overcrowded. They need some field hospitals put up as quickly as possible to be able to take in the amount of people they have. They need doctors. They need nurses. Okay, people are all over on the floor the way it was after the 12th of January. We need help. We need quick help. New doubts are being raised over reports of high-level U.S.-backed peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban. U.S. officials have claimed they've allowed senior Taliban leaders to enter Afghanistan for meetings with Afghan leaders, with some even flying aboard a NATO aircraft. But McClatchy newspapers report several U.S. officials and experts see the claims as part of an information strategy to sow division within the Taliban, and that no significant talks are underway. One U.S. official said, Quote, this is a psychological operation, plain and simple. The Obama administration is preparing to unveil a new $2 billion aid deal for the Pakistani military. According to the Associated Press, the money will be provided under a program for the purchase of U.S.-made weaponry. The New York Times, meanwhile, is reporting the U.S. will cut aid and training to around a half dozen Pakistani army units accused of killing unarmed civilians and prisoners during recent offensives against the Taliban in Svat Valley and South Waziristan. The aid will be withheld under the Leahy Law, which prohibits military assistance to units suspected of committing atrocities. A humanitarian aid convoy has arrived in the Gaza Strip after departing from Britain over a month ago. On Thursday, over 300 activists with the group Viva Palestina crossed into Gaza through the Rafah border, crossing with Egypt. The group includes several dozen people who took part in the Gaza-bound aid flotilla attacked by Israeli forces earlier this year. A wrongful death case brought by the family of the slain American peace activist Rachel Corey, meanwhile, has resumed in Israel. Rachel Corey was crushed to death by an Israeli military bulldozer in Gaza seven years ago, on March 16, 2003, as she stood in front of a Palestinian home to help prevent its demolition. An internal Israeli army investigation exonerated the soldiers involved. On Thursday, the driver of the bulldozer testified in court for the first time, but he spoke from behind a partition to protect his identity. Appearing on CNN International, Rachel's mother, Cindy Corey, criticized the secretive proceedings. 
This is the second witness that we've seen testify behind a screen. And I, we felt that it was uh, disassociating in a way. It, it, it distanced this person from us. Uh, I hope to see a whole human being today and to hear from a whole human being. Instead, we got uh, the words, sometimes pretty conflicted, pretty confused words uh -huh. uh, from this person behind the screen. In his testimony, the driver said he couldn't remember several basic details of Rachel Corey's killing, including the time of day when it occurred. New details have emerged on the right-wing group spending tens of millions of dollars to influence the upcoming midterm elections. The website Think Progress reports the billionaire brothers, David and Charles Koch, held a secretive meeting with influential right-wing figures in June to plot their election strategy and lobbying activities for this year. The 210 attendees included executives from the oil industry, coal companies, health insurers, banks, right-wing pundits, including Glenn Beck, and officials from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The gathering was the latest in a series of biannual meetings organized by the Koch brothers, who have quietly helped bankroll the Tea Party movement and dozens of other right-wing causes. The New York Times, meanwhile, reports that nearly half the $140 million raised by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in 2008 came from just 45 donors. Many of the donations coincided with lobbying campaigns that potentially benefited the donors. The chamber claims to have only 300,000 members. The New York Times also reports today that the donor behind the Swift Boat Veterans attack ads against John Kerry in 2004 is pouring millions of dollars into this year's election. The donor, Texas home developer Bob Perry, has given over $13 million to Republicans and right-wing groups for this election cycle. The Center for American Progress, meanwhile, reports that 13 right-wing groups have spent over $68.5 million on advertising this year to undermine clean energy legislation. With the elections under two weeks away, President Obama continues a multi-state campaign swing to boost support for vulnerable Democratic candidates. Appearing in Seattle, Obama urged Washington voters to back Democratic Senator Patty Murray. The journey we began together was not about putting a president in the White House. It was about building a movement for change that endures. It's about realizing that in America, anything is possible if we're willing to work for it, if we're willing to fight for it. That's what Patty Murray believes. That's what I believe. And if that's what you believe, I need you to knock on doors and make phone calls and talk to your friends and talk to your neighbors. And if you do that, I promise you, not only will we win this election, but we will restore the dream for the next generation. Obama will hold a rally for California Senator Barbara Boxer in San Francisco today before heading to Nevada to support House Majority Leader Harry Reid. A U.S. soldier accused of being the ringleader of a secret kill team in Afghanistan has refused to testify in military court. Staff Sergeant Calvin Gibbs is said to have directed the rogue platoon that allegedly blew up and shot Afghan civilians at random and collected their fingers as trophies. On Thursday, Gibbs invoked his right to avoid self-incrimination after being called to testify against fellow soldier David Bram. The Pentagon's disclosed it once hosted a Muslim cleric now targeted for assassination at a luncheon in the months following the 9-11 attacks. Military officials say Anwar al-Awlaki was invited as part of an outreach effort towards Muslim Americans. The Obama administration's authorized the CIA to capture or kill al-Awlaki over alleged ties to the failed Christmas Day airline bombing and the shooting at Fort Hood. He's believed to be hiding in Yemen. An Iranian-American man has returned to the United States after two and a half years in an Iranian prison. Reza Taghavi was jailed after giving $200 to an alleged member of a militant Iranian rebel group. After arriving in Los Angeles, Taghavi said he had passed the money on as a favor to an acquaintance and didn't know the recipient. I'm glad I'm back to the United States. This is really my home now. Somebody by name, by name Afar gave me $200 to pass it on to someone in Iran who was a part of a terrorist group called Thunder. And that was it, and I've become, you know, 
arrested for that. But anyway, the support of my, of my son, my daughter, and my family, now I am back. I want to be at home. I'm glad I'm here. I hope everything is going to be all right from now on. And Democratic Congress member Raul Grijalva of Arizona has temporarily closed his Tucson office after receiving a package covered in swastikas containing a suspicious white powder. It's the third security threat to Grijalva's office this year. The FBI says it's investigating but believes the powder is toxic. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.